From judges having a meltdown over horrible dishes. It's just not good enough, it's not MasterChef. To contestants who just couldn't drop their nasty attitudes. When it comes to MasterChef, drama is the status quo. I didn't need to walk up there and have them taste that dish to know that it was bad. And first up on today's list is what happened with this contestant right here. If you ask me, episode 9 of season 5 was one of the most dramatic episodes of the season. I mean, the challenges were crazy and the pressure, it was through the roof. And believe me, the mystery box challenge they were up against was no walk in the park. We want one composed master chef worthy salmon dish using one of these salmon. Now, you may think, what's so hard about salmon? But wait, turns out there was way more to the challenge. There is one fish left, it's for us. I'm gonna fillet it, Graham's gonna cook it, I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> the challenge proved to be as high stakes as ever, as the chefs were entrusted with the daunting task of replicating Chef Ramsay's precise fish filleting technique. And yeah, everyone was feeling the pressure. I've never filleted a fish before. However, right in the midst of this mayhem, one contestant bore the brunt of it. And it wasn't long before Elise dropped a bombshell that reverberated through the competition. Medic. What's the matter? I need a medic. Are we done? Chair, please. Some water, please. Medic. Chair, please. Yup, she screamed out that she needed a medic as soon as possible. But that was just the beginning. The tension peaked as Elise began to faint, leaving everyone in the kitchen equal parts shocked and concerned. Pressure is so intense. I think that Elise is just not able to keep up. Saying Elise was feeling it would be a huge understatement. She had to take a moment to collect herself, or things were gonna get much worse. Take your time, take your time. Here you go. There you go. Just stay nice and calm. Just then, the medics rushed in to do their thing, starting with handing her a water bottle. But the question remained, would she still soldier on or throw in the towel? That night, Elise faced a critical decision. She could either stay in the kitchen or bow out. So what do you think she decided? Sadly, Elise has left the MasterChef kitchen. Oh, yeah, nobody expected a strong contender like Elise to exit the MasterChef kitchen like this. But don't worry, because Elise turned out to be way stronger than anyone thought she was. I'm okay, chef. Are you sure? Yes, chef. Yeah. I'm sure. Literally only a few moments later, she returned back to the kitchen, held her head high, and demonstrated resilience like never before. However, of course, Chef Ramsay could see through her smile. He offered her an out, telling her that she really didn't have to cook. Yet Elise opted to face the challenge thrown her way head on. I want to come back. I'll at least get okay. something on the plate. Okay, let's have a go. How inspiring, man. I mean, it's really not every day that you get to see contestants who refuse to give up like this. Just completely folded under the pressure today. I had to take a few minutes to get my feet back on the ground. Even her fellow contestants were in awe of how deep she was able to dig. She came back. Definitely take my hat off to you, girl. But sadly, things didn't exactly work out in her favor. In the elimination round, she ended up presenting a less than stellar dish. Roasted mushroom and steamed artichoke ravioli, red wine reduction tomato sauce. And the famous chef was not one bit impressed. I just don't know how you can present a dish that's so bland. It's a failure, I understand. If going through this rough challenge wasn't already enough, what Chef Ramsay said next peers right through her confidence. Have you given up? No, I'm trying not to give up. No, I don't think I've given up. Everything was on the line. It just tastes like it. Elise found herself in tears once again as the judges faced a tough decision. And unfortunately, what Elise presented just wasn't going to cut it moving forward. Elise, your time is done in the MasterChef kitchen. In an unexpected twist, Chef Ramsay showed a rare moment of empathy as he bid farewell to Elise while recognizing her baking prowess in the same breath. And surprisingly, her untimely departure left viewers grappling with a whirlwind of mixed emotions. But turns out, Elise wasn't the only one to set an intense tone on the show. Because this next contestant definitely gave her a run for her money as far as drama is concerned. You've gone bananas! You've gone bananas! I'm talking about none other than this contestant from season 3. And this dude's presence in episode 4 practically dragged the entire show down into the depths of Hell's Kitchen. Now, you might remember Ryan Umane, the guy with the smug attitude that could rival Chef Ramsay's stare. During the Duck Mystery Box Challenge, Chef Ramsay called down the top three contestants whose dishes stood out the most. When Ryan's name was called out, his hopes started to fly high, believing that he had it in the bag this time. I'm really not surprised that my plate is one of the top dishes. These other cooks are going to have to step up their game if they're going to want to compete with me. Yeah, humility was pretty much alien to this guy. 
I mean, he had the audacity to tell himself that he wasn't surprised to be in the top three. Little did he know what the top three actually was. You managed to cook what we think are the worst. I'm really not surprised. Well, maybe it's better to just wait for the final decision before completely popping off, huh? Talk about a premature celebration. Anyway, when the actual announcement was made, the smug grin on Ryan's face was gone in two seconds flat. But let's see what he presented that got him into this mess in the first place. Ryan had walked up with a balsamic rum glazed duck breast with caramelized bananas and sweet potato puree. Oh yeah, now doesn't that sound fancy? But taste is really the only thing that matters at the end of the day. You proud of this? And we all know how Joe gets when nasty food is put in front of him. So he asked Ryan if he was proud of his creation. But that was just the beginning. Rendered to the point of being dry. Yeah, you may have some crisp on the skin, but bananas? I mean, it's like, is this a joke? Oh yeah, Joe went all in and made a huge stink about how that crispy skin wasn't gonna save the duck from the overcooked mess that it really was. Now, to be honest, I'd actually feel bad for the person receiving criticism, but hey, it's Ryan we're talking about. And this dude desperately needed a reality check before he went off the deep end. The cook on the banana is better than the cook on the duck. And then came Chef Ramsay, and if there's one thing that we know about him, is that he doesn't shy away from setting someone straight. Especially contestants were as cocky as Ryan. Which is why Ramsay unleashed a classic verbal beatdown straight out of his Hell's Kitchen playbook. Bananas with duck. You've gone bananas. That's what's happened. You've gone bananas. Uh-huh, clearly Ryan wasn't the genius that he thought he was. And he earned a good earful to set the record straight. You have managed to cook the duck. Everything else around that, dreadful. Now, when it was time for the elimination, Scott managed to skip the chopping block by getting a lifeline. And so, the decision was now between two contestants. But that's when Ryan decided to pull some strings. I just wanted to say that I'm not, definitely not ready to go home yet. And you were right, the hero of this dish was the duck. Oh man, I'd pay a million dollars if I had anywhere near that much money, that is, for him to shut up. Like, this is just embarrassing. Ryan did his damnedest to save himself, claiming that he wasn't ready to go home. What's more, he actually said the duck was the real hero of the dish. But, I mean, Chef Ramsay took another look at how overcooked it was, and... No begging, you're in this competition, competing, not judging. Let's get that right. Despite that, against all odds, Ryan survived to cook another day. Samantha, please take your apron off and place it on your station. You're leaving the competition. The fact that he survived elimination even after presenting a disaster of a dish and on top of a terrible attitude was just unfair if I'm being completely honest. But what about you? Don't forget to let me know in the comments section down below. And with that, let's head over to Season 10, Episode 2, which was all about flavor and one unexpected hero. I just can't believe and that I'm doing this. Like, this is my chance to start my dream, and I really want it to be true. Yep, that's Fred, the unassuming revenue analyst from California. Yeah, my first thought when I'm thinking MasterChef material definitely isn't revenue analysis. Anyway, things kicked off with only two aprons left, and Fred was on a mission to secure one of them. Now, Fred wasn't your typical MasterChef contestant. He was a shy, awkward guy who'd found courage thanks to his mom's encouragement. Let's just say this guy wasn't just here to cook, but he was here to conquer. Black vinegar and Ovaltine infused chocolate cake with matzah mascarpone cream. If you thought that was the end of that massive description of his, you're so wrong. Caramelized white chocolate and burnt miso ganache, togarashi walnut crumble, chocolate twigs, and edible flowers. I mean, wow, way to paint a word picture, dude. Fred had prepared a black vinegar infused chocolate cake with a mouth-watering array of toppings. But it wasn't just about the ingredients, it's about the passion he poured into each element. And trust me, his mom's influence was evident in his determination to make her proud. As the judges eyed his peculiar creation, Chef Ramsay and Aaron exchanged amusing glances. But hold it right there, because Fred was about to blow their minds. And before you know it, the moment of truth arrived and Fred's masterpiece was unveiled. Visually, absolutely stunning. Thank you. Beautiful. The chocolate twigs, edible flowers, and the artistic mean deering of mascarpone cream immediately caught the judges' attention. And yeah, the tension was definitely building as they took their first bites. So light. This is like delicious. Serious. Thank you. Well, that was just the beginning of the praise Fred was in for. Aaron commended its decadence. Ooey gooey decadent. As for Joe, you have to see his reaction for yourselves. But it's also so smart because yeah. it's all those things, but it's not. But it really wasn't the reaction that was the highlight of the episode. Just you wait till you see what Chef Ramsay had to say. Gentlemen, insane. 
is gone. The famous chef left everyone shocked when he kept going back for more, scraping the plate with his fork, and then did this. And I think that says it all right there. I guess there. Gordon likes it. Yup, he literally licked it clean. I mean, that's a golden moment right there. It's not every day that Chef Ramsay even bothers finishing a dish, even if it's outstanding. The drama reached its peak as Chef Ramsay, without waiting for any verbal judgments, did something totally, well, unexpected. There's no debate. That's a yes, take that. Yup, he tossed an apron at Fred, laughing in pure delight. He even declared Fred as his new culinary hero. But that's not the end of it. Chef Ramsay then, in a move that could only be described as absolutely insane, left the audience in pure shock. <laughs> he took the plate back to his seat, and you won't believe what he did next. It's thought provoking, look at that! <laughs> yup, he smashed it on the floor, a mic drop that echoed through the Master Chef kitchen. The other judges were left in awe, and Fred, well, he was the guy who turned a cooking competition into a plate licking, mic dropping spectacle. While moments like these are seldom seen on Master Chef, let's admit that when it comes to genuine drama, especially the spicy kind, there's no shortage. Like take for instance what happened in Season 8, Episode 18, where Jeff faced the heat like never before. This time, Jeff was the sixth contestant in the hot seat. Now, normally, contestants control their own time in the elimination round, but not today. Kate, having won the mystery box challenge, held the power to assign time limits, turning up the pressure on Jeff. It's got barely 15 minutes to cut. I've got no idea how he's gonna pull this off. So what does he whip up in those 15 minutes that he was left with? Well, check this out. So what we have here is a salmon filet with a Mediterranean vibe to it there. A little bit of feta cheese and sundry tomato relish over a nice apple and pear, cucumber, gratin, cranberry, and stout beer. Huh, that's an ambitious mouthful, right? Well, not really. Jeff. That's exactly what I want. Jeff Ramsey questioned Jeff about how well cooked his salmon was supposed to be. Now Jeff had aimed for medium rare, but if Chef Ramsay is asking you what the cook of a piece of meat is supposed to be with that kind of expression, yeah, you better believe you dropped something completely raw in front of him. He went on to make a crazy comparison too. It's weird. It's like sushi there. The fibers haven't even gone. Look. Damn. But Jeff wasn't ready to back down either. Snarky as ever, he defended his rare salmon the best that he could. But that's what I was going for. I wanted it to be on the rarer side. I really don't know who he was trying to convince, because as you know, he barely had 15 minutes to prepare the dish. There is absolutely no way that he could have actually cooked the salmon all the way through in that time. So his only option was rare. However, he really wasn't budging from his lie. Are you saying you wanted it that rare? Yes. Chef Ramsay knows every single trick in the book as far as lying is concerned, and what was his response? Stout and cranberries and gratin and cucumber and raw salmon with feta cheese don't go. Period. Oh yeah, he left no stone unturned to slam Jeff's dish. Honestly, the combination of raw salmon, cucumber, apple gratin, and feta cheese just wasn't hitting. But wait, things were about to get juicier. Enter Dino, and this guy decided to have a little bit of fun. Were we allowed to make sushi? No. You couldn't be wrong. But why do you serve it raw? He playfully asked Jeff about making sushi and questioned why he served raw salmon. Jeff told Dino to go make spaghetti and meatballs instead. Wow, super original insult for the Italian in the room, buddy. And well, that is how the Clash of Titans began. Go make a spaghetti and meatball. Go make a what? Go make another spaghetti and meatball. And what do you know, Dino fired back real quick. Be making a spaghetti meatball for your lady tonight. Oh yeah, nobody gets one over Dino. It almost seemed like he was poking fun at him just to make him feel bad, and I guess he succeeded because Jeff's reply was brutal. F yourself. <laughs> and as time passed and more words were exchanged, the fight only seemed to get worse. Should they make the $250,000 up to your therapist or to you? Damn, Jeff may not know how to cook a decent dish, but he sure knows how to fire back at someone. But again, nobody gets one over Dino. I'm already insured. Okay, I just wanna make sure that that's covered. My therapist is already paid for it. Okay. The atmosphere grew tense and the fight escalated to the point that the judges needed to intervene. And finally, it was time for the verdict. Chef Ramsay, unimpressed by Jeff's dish and his defensive attitude, dropped the bomb. Yashika. Just wait, because just when Jeff thought he was bidding farewell to Yachicha, Chef Ramsay decided to drop in another bomb. And Jeff. 
If you ever want to know what brutal means in practice, just rewatch this clip. But I don't think you're ever going to be able to forget it. Nobody expected a double elimination. As for Jeff, when Chef Ramsay asked him about how he felt about the turn of events, he admitted that he felt humbled, thanked his competitors, and bid farewell to the Master Chef kitchen. What a damn journey, man. But when it comes to Master Chef, the heat isn't just limited to the kitchen. I'm talking about the most jaw-dropping and heart-pounding moments from episode 3 of season 3 where one contestant took the spotlight during the auditions. So Stacy was the first contender of the day and she walked in with all the confidence in the world armed with her dish. Hello. Hello, I'm Stacy. And what was she bringing to the table, you ask? Well, here you go. So where did the inspiration for cooking come from? So there she was, rocking the Master Chef scene with a New York strip that had an espresso crust and a chimichurri sauce that she hoped would be a showstopper to end all showstoppers. Well, not gonna lie, from the looks of it, it looked downright delicious. I'm talking about the kind of plate that makes you question your loyalty to your go-to takeout joint. And get this, where she was from, fast food was pretty much all that was available. In any case, to pull off a masterpiece that not only tasted divine, but also looked like a foodie's dream, now that was some next level kitchen sorcery right there. But hey, it's not always about the looks now, is it? Because once the judges dug into the dish, they weren't too impressed. There's a lot going on in that plate. It's just charred vegetables and a steak. While Chef Ramsay had at least a few words to share with the contestant, the same can't be said about Joe. It was clear out of all the judges, he hated the dish the most. Now, there are two versions of Joe you can come across when you send bad food up to the podium. One that completely humiliates you to the point that you start questioning your own self-worth, or the one that just walks away giving you that deadly glare. And that's what happened in this case. However, Chef Ramsay had way more to share. You know, the vegetables stand out, yet that's not the hero. The hero for me should be the New York Strip. The famous chef took issue with the veggies overshadowing the star of the show, the steak. Ouch, this misstep spelled a rough start for our girl. And when it came to giving a yes or a no, Chef Ramsay rooted for the latter. For me, it's a no. But Graham decided to give her a chance, seeing the potential that she had. Now, the final decision whether she was in the game or not rested upon Joe, the man with the power to make dreams come true or shatter them to pieces. And what did he go with? No. Stacy faced a really tough moment when Joe gave her a solid no. But wait, plot twist. Just when you thought it was game over, Joe had a change of heart that no one saw coming. Picture this, Stacy's heart sinking as she walked away, disappointment etched across her face. But hold on, Graham wasn't having it. I think that's a, a bad call. He argued that it was a bad call, emphasizing the seasoning and acidity in her dish. The tension thickened as Joe announced something that doesn't really happen every day. For the first time ever, I retasted it. I'm changing my mind. Oh my yeah, for the first time ever, he decided to give Stacy another shot. The man himself retried her dish deep in thought. And then, in a surprising twist, he sprinted to the waiting area with an apron in hand. Imagine the emotions running high as Stacy received that lifeline. Crushed at first, she seized the opportunity for redemption. They allowed me another chance. I am America's next master chef! Yeah! The judges granted her another chance, and with newfound determination, Stacy declared herself the next Master Chef. So can you think of any more moments from the show that left you shocked? Don't forget to let me know in the comments section down below. And if you want to see more of the Kitchen Madness, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Plus, if you enjoyed this video, you have to check out my social media pages and this next video right here since it's simply crazier.